tell you about it is this. Um, it's oh come, it's easy. You can just throw a paint on it, you just splash it on, you can move it around with your foot, you can make a mess and all that, and say there, that's out. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> that's the kind of comments I got. Well I get occasionally. But um, on the open days, you would you would actually you get people coming in and, and nudging me and saying, come on, tell the truth. Um, you know, it, it, I won't tell anyone. It's just a comment, isn't it? You know, you can just throw a bit of paint on. And I used to get so annoyed, and, and, and some of them were so rude. They would they would actually talk about you as though you weren't there. You could hear them sort of in the studio and, and talking with each other and, and, and saying really rude things about the work. You know, really, really hard. Um, Edgar Degas once said. Um, People who, people who don't paint find painting really easily, but people who do paint uh, find it very difficult. It's, it's right. <laughs> Abstraction is, is the most difficult aspect of painting, really. Because I, mean, I look at it like um, it's the creative side of painting. Whereas um, if you're recording something you can see, that's, that's more craft based. It's a craft to be able to do that. Abstraction is it, it's, it's a language, it's a painterly language. And I think when you, when you look at abstraction, you shouldn't look at it. I get people saying, oh, I, can see, I can see a fish's head in that, or I can see, I can see a star shape, or there's, I can see a face of some kind, you know. And I say, you're not looking at it properly. Would you, for example, Painting abstract is, is like the, the musical equivalent to jazz, jazz music. And you don't ask, what's that about? It's an instrumental piece of music. You accept it for what it is. You look at it, you listen to it in a different way to what you would um, a piece of music with lyrics. There's essentially three kinds of abstraction. There's a pure abstraction, like, um, for example, Mondrian, Barnett Newman, I don't know whether you can, you can picture this, this kind of work, Barnett Newman, hard edge stuff, where you could just get a, foot, a canvas, it's just a red canvas or whatever. You know, that, that, that's, that to me is, is pure abstraction. And then you can get the things that are abstracted. For example, you can get an abstracted landscape, or you can get an abstracted figure. If you can imagine somebody like uh, William de Kooning, or um, Picasso. Brag, people like that. The, the figure's been, con you know, contorted to sort of to, to fit the composition, to, to, to be more gestural, and it's it's slightly abstracted. So you get that. There's various degrees of abstraction in, in that category. So there's that kind of abstraction, and then the third kind of abstraction is the kind of abstraction that I I make, which is abstraction with a subject matter, but it hasn't got much of a, a visual reference to, to reality. So I, I, paint, I paint things that exist, but you can't see. So would you say it was more emotional for you than it's more emotional? Yeah. It's not necessarily emotional. Not always emotional. I mean, how would you paint a sound? How would you paint, um, how would you paint a, a smell? <laughs> or a feeling. Or, 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 yeah, or a feeling of some kind. Yeah, it doesn't have to be emotional. No. But it's, it's, you know, this one is emotional. That's your inspiration. I mean, what yeah. is your inspiration? My, you just my inspiration is, is, is the challenge of painting something, making something visible that isn't actually visible. Make something accessible. Yeah. And hopefully, <coughs> it, needs, it needs to be looked at longer than just three seconds. It needs, it, 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 abstraction can take, sometimes can take years to reveal itself. But it will, it will reveal itself over time. And that's what, that's what I like about abstraction. It, um, it's a slow burner of painting. Because painting is like, it's like constructing a, a piece of music. It's the same, it's the same creative process. Uh, you've, got, you've got your marks, some different kind of marks, different ways of applying the paint. You've got your colour combinations and you've got composition. So you've got three big elements there to put them together in a 
way of saying what you want to say. It's like putting an orchestra together. You've got to learn the language. You've got to develop the, the language of painting, composition, mark making, and, and colour relations. That's what it's about. They're the three main elements for me. You've got to learn the language. You've got to develop the, the language of painting, composition, mark making, and, and colour relations. That's what it's about. They're the three main elements for me. Do you think abstraction lends itself more to a square format? I'm just, you don't think so? No. 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 Just it, it, about that, about it depends on what your subject matter is, because the format, mm -hmm. the, the, the way you construct a painting, um, it, it's, it, is, it, it determines, but it's determined by your subject matter. So you choose the format. I decide what the format is, and I do a little line drawing. And I, I start filling in the shapes and spaces, working things out. Tension within the composition, and it's all just it's all just, just line drawings at this point, mm -hmm. and then they will they, they will they will develop into you know they look like this kind of thing you know um, that might have been painted two or three times before I got it right, even though it looks like it's been thrown on, and it's got it's got to be the right colour, it's got to be the right weight of mark, and um, it's the same with music. Mm, yeah, I'd love yeah. to know your experience of. Painting one of these paintings. You know, the experience? Yeah, pick a painting and sort of describe how. Right, okay. Well, well, this one, for example, uh, it was built. And um, it's my wife, and we went to this, to this little club where they did flamenco dancing. And uh, I'd, never, I'd, I'd seen it on the telly, I'd seen videos of it, I always liked it because I liked the guitar music. I was interested to go and hear the guitar music because I, I play guitar. And um, but the dancing and the whole thing just completely blew me away. And it was so emotional. And uh, I couldn't help it. I was blubbing like a baby at the end of the whole clapping. And I thought, oh my God, how embarrassing, you know. And it was, it, one of the dancers said, Duende, what? I said, well, what's that? What does that mean? Because you, you only get about 50 people in there at the most of these, these things. And he said, Duende is when you're, it's a, it's a Spanish gypsy word. And it's when your emotions come to the surface. And uh, it, I just thought it was a fantastic word to explain this. It's not even in the, the Spanish dictionary. But it's called Duende. And it's, it's your emotions come to the surface. And he said, people, some people have Duende, some people don't have Duende. But I think everybody's got Duende. But I just think some of it's buried. <laughs> in the lock, under lock and key. And if your duende is buried in, in, in a little box somewhere inside of you, in the, in the lock and key, you won't get that painting. <laughs> so, and, and, and it was, it was uh, that's how that painting started. I thought, I've got to paint that. I've got to paint that feeling. And like I say, I paint things that, you can, that exist that you can't see.